Hi, this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches, and I know this has been like a week until um, since I've made a video. Um, let's see here. Uh, this is going to be a yarn chat video because I have a few things, different type of things to talk about. Um, I have a couple birthday presents that I wanted to show you guys that you'd be interested in um, because I did have my birthday late August, mid-August, but because of a family wedding and such... Um, the wedding was our focus as the family. Um, then I wanted to talk, I think I have a finished project that I will put a clip in and uh, talk of a new project. All right, so let me start with the birthday presents. The first thing I got, well, and this is not the first. This is this is something my sister got me, Brie, from Beads of Hope by Brie. If you remember before, she got me a different book um, the dish cloth book and some amigurumi eyes. But then she also got me these, this mini crochet creatures. Take a look at these. And these are tiny little, little, like, I want to say egg sized animals. Look, there's a chicken, a bear, <clears throat> maybe a dog, a little hamster, a sloth. The interesting thing is these amigurumis, Besides being little tiny projects, I think they include felt. If you take a look at the front side here of the chicken, um, you make the little chicken, it looks like you make the wings and the, the comb, and then you sew on a little piece of felt with some stitching. So um, later today, and all the things that I get to do this Memorial Day weekend, I'm gonna pop over to either Joann's or Hobby Lobby, maybe even Walmart because uh, I actually wanted to get some Play-Doh for my class. Um, I'm going to pick up some pieces of felt. So I'm really excited to start making something out of here. Um, the sheep. Oh my gosh, look at this. I just saw the ladybug. The or It's British, so they call it a ladybird, which gives me the first clue that this might not be an American crochet. It might be British. What does it say? If it says double crochet instead of single crochet, it's British. It is British, so it says six double crochets into a ring. That's something you really should think about if you're new to crochet and you've, you know, you're opened yourself to the world of YouTube videos and Ravelry, is when can you tell the difference between a British or a UK pattern and I think the rest of the world, I'm not exactly sure, for sure American. And one of the things for sure is that they don't have a single crochet. They start right away at the double crochet and they go up. Um, I wanted to show you another super cute one I just saw over here. Um, it's the butterfly. Um, oh here, look at, look at those butterflies. You make this like little egg and, and then you put these like little wings on there. Um, my second grade class gets the Einstein unit where we watch the metamorphosis of a caterpillar. And so it might be cute to make a few of those little butterflies for the room. So thank you so much, Brie. I'm very excited. I need to get some felt and I'm gonna get started on making these um, cute little patterns. Another thing that I got for my birthday, that super glittery card that I got from my husband's um, stepmom, my mother-in-law, it fell over. I, it's so beautiful, it's so glittery. <laughs> um, it, was, it was wrapped in this really nice box. I was like, I'm going to keep that box. You know how I hoard up my crochet societies. This is made by my stepmom. She made me a beautiful, look at this, and she knitted this um, shawl or wrap. So I thought I would put it on. This would be, it's nice and light. And then um, come around like this. And so this will be a nice... It smells good too. And then she got me this really beautiful butterfly um, shawl pin. So like, okay, not to get too like God on you, but you know how like just things like work out for the good or, you know, like if you're following God's plan in your life and you're trusting how things work out. So like, I've always loved butterflies. I think they're beautiful. I love the whole metamorphosis thing, the idea. And I think it's a nice symbolism for um, true your true creation relationship with Christ. We all start out as caterpillars that are greedy and we just want everything for ourselves. And then as we begin our relationship with God, not religion, but God, we become a new creation. 
and a butterfly. And then I just think that's really interesting because I've always loved them. And then I got this job. This is my fourth year teaching. And one of the things that they do in second grade is the caterpillar unit uh, with butterflies. And um, I'm like, oh, I love butterflies. I'm so excited. So anyway, I just love this butterfly pin. I've always loved them, butterflies. I think they're so pretty. And then, um, so if you don't know, you could wear a shawl pin. Ooh, look at that. Like this, let's say. Gotta make sure I have it the right way because last time when I put it on, she said I put it on backwards. Okay, if I put it on like this and then you would use one of these shawl pins to help, you know, pin it together. And then when it's super cute like that, it's like a little decoration. So thank you so much. It's so beautiful. Butterfly card, pretty paper. I saved it all. Um, I, of course, will probably use it for another gift for someone else, maybe, that box. Um, okay, so those are the last two things I wanted to show you that I got for my birthday that I thought you would like because they're yarn related, right? Um, this beautiful shawl and the crochet book. Okay, um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna stop the camera and insert a clip of something else I made. Um, one of my little nuggets from last year at the end of the school year asked me to make this thing for him. A, I can't remember what it's called, Blanca. Luckily, my husband knew exactly what it was and I found this pattern online. I made it. I will insert into the description box below the link to if you, uh, to the Blanca head. I'm gonna be honest, I followed it stitch by stitch and mine came out quite bigger, uh, quite a lot bigger than the picture on the pattern, which is a free um, blog spot pattern. Um, the other thing, so besides the fact that mine came out different, I kept his hair long. I looked on Facebook or I looked on YouTube and other internet images and this character could either have short hair or long hair. So I kept it long and then I did not put the glowy ball. They, the person, the creator of the pattern, she wanted you to put like this like little glowy ball, like take it out of some kind of like St. Patrick's Day necklace and put it inside there so that Blanca could have a flashy head because um, he's from a video game, uh, Street Fighter, if you've ever heard of that. And apparently he has a power of electrifying or shocking people. And so if he had that like little flashy thingy inside of him, it would represent what he does in the game. Um, I didn't do that. I didn't have a flashy ball. So I will stop the video, insert the clip of me showing you what I made for my former student. Um, and then I'll start back up and talk to you about my last uh, project. Okay, so I'm inserting this clip in with one of my videos or maybe at the end of my next video because I wanted to show you the Blanca head. I of course will put a link in the description. The pattern is, the pattern is passable. It basically tells you how to make the head, it tells you how to make the jaw, tells you how to make the ears, and then it says attach eyes and attach hair. And then I decided to make some crocheted little teeth to put on there because uh, I didn't have any felt. This is Blanca. Blanca is from the video game Street Fighter. I started to fuzz out his hair. The pattern has his hair really short, but when you look Blanca up in a Google image, he has a long, luxurious mane. So I'm just leaving it like this. My husband wants me to try to straighten it better. I don't know. But anyway, I want to make sure I had a little bit of a clip to show you guys about this so you could see a finished project. He did not take very long to make. I mean, see, it's just a ball. The longest I have spent was trying to adjust this head. And then I have a few more hairs down here that I have to work on straightening, separating. But the things that you'll do for the kids that you love. Okay, well, anyway, I don't know if this is at the end of the video or in the middle of the one because I'm making this ahead of time. Okay, bye. So hopefully, hopefully you loved that project. He loved it. He was excited. He gave me lots of hugs. 
and it's nice to make little kids happy. Sometimes I have a hard time making things that I don't like. I don't know if other artists or creators have that. When you look at something, you're like, hmm, I don't want to make that. It's, sometimes it's hard to get the gumption up. But he came to my classroom this year and he's like, are you going to make that? And I just looked at his cute little face and I'm like, yes, I will. <laughs> okay, so I actually made most of it on the way to Green Bay in the car. Okay, so the next thing that I have is another one of my students this year asked me to make her a poncho. And I'm going to tell you what, I froze in my tracks when <laughs> she asked. Because you guys... Her sister was in my class two years ago. So not last school year, but the year before when I was on this poncho run. If you remember from old videos, one of the little nuggets in my class asked me to make her a poncho. I made her a poncho. And then like 20 ponchos later, I had made one for everyone in the class. I even made them for the boys. And I didn't make a boy style poncho. What I did then was I made two rectangles and I sewed them together in a way that kind of had like a hole opening for the head. And then I crocheted single crochet around that, single crochet around the edge, and then sent them all on their way. Every single one of them. Because typically if you make a poncho for a boy, um, usually they're more squared, rectangled, and then their arms come out those holes. Maybe if I can find a picture of the one that I made Flynn, I could insert that at the end of the video. But I did not. I just made all of them, those two rectangles, and you kind of lay them oblong and you sew them together. Um, but I couldn't find the pattern that I used before because basically what happens is when I start making something, especially multiples of something, obviously for the time I start memorizing the the pattern because 20, even five ponchos in, I knew what I was doing. Um, and I misplaced it and it is what it is. So I was searching through Ravelry and I found another pattern and this one has you crochet in the shape of an L. <clears throat> so I'll put a link in the description to the new pattern that I'm gonna try. You have to buy it from Ravelry, but in um, on Ravelry, Ravelry, there's a link in the description in the pattern area where you can go to her website and find it. Now there's a lot of advertisements and riffraff on there, but it's free. So I look, I look, I'm following it off of there. And then I can give you a little bit more detailed of a um, video later on with the finished poncho. Um, I am going to try to keep it a secret because I feel comfortable with that because my husband actually used to work with her dad. And then, like I said, I had her, um, sister in my class a few years ago and her mom is uh, one of our rock star volunteers at school so I feel very comfortable in saying that this is a gift for a family friend not necessarily um, hopefully I don't end up making 20 ponchos this year but if I do I suppose what does it matter okay so I've decided uh, her mom said her favorite colors are pink purple teal and mint and I have this color from Karen Simply Soft. I love how soft in it uh, Karen Simply Soft is. I do know that some people don't really like it as much because it has kind of a fuzzy halo kind of look to it. Um, but I think it's really nice for softness. Got a little fuzz on me there. Um, and this is called Soft Green, but I think it looks minty. So this is what I'm going to make for her. I have been debating I'm going to put this here, adding a little pink to it or possibly this yellow because these are all three her favorite colors. I'm not interested in changing off a bunch of rows and having a bunch of ends to weave in and doing a lot of pattern design. I'm just going to make it, maybe I'll do three rows of each color. I haven't decided, but this is... I have two more skeins of this, so it's either going to be all mint or mint in maybe one of these other colors, because I don't necessarily love the look of those together, but this is cute and that's cute. So that is the color scheme that I'm looking to make this little honey, her poncho. Um, you know, what is it, the expression, your famous last words, hopefully that's the last poncho. Um, I have already got a serious start on hats. This, um, 
past spring, I was making and knitting lots of hats. So I'm pretty sure I'm still gonna give them a hat this year. Um, so I feel like that's a lot of crocheting. And then I was making those little octopus and like these little toys, amigurumis for prize bin. So I feel like there's plenty of things that I've made them that I don't need to make everybody a poncho. All right, so that is it for this yarn chat. Um, I need to head upstairs and start crocheting this poncho for the little little nugget in my class and um, hopefully get that done. This is Memor Labor Day weekend, so I have three days uh, and then I can bring it to school, put it in a little package, wrap it up and hand it to her mother and her mother can give it to her. And that way she can say her mom gave her the poncho. I don't know. All right. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Thanks for liking and sharing my videos. And until the next video, happy crafting. Bye.